California's most wide open primary in two decades ended Tuesday with contests from governor to seats in the U. S House that seemed focused, even fixated at times, on the race for second place. The rules of the top two primary, where a cluster of candidates gets whittled down to two semi-finalists, seemed at times to eclipse everything else about the campaigns being waged this year. Advertisement gamesmanship was everywhere. Could a feared opponent be shut out of a spot on the fall ballot? Might a political party's leaders convince some hopefuls in crowded races to step aside and thus avoid splitting the vote? In the end, either because of those efforts, or in spite of them, the playing field looked very much like a traditional primary. Unofficial returns on Tuesday showed that only two statewide races, at most, will end up as of same party showdown in November. Otherwise, and in the overwhelming majority of California's races, the two-party system seems to have survived intact. The candidates who succeeded were largely staunch defenders of either liberal or conservative principles moderation was not the big winner in California on election night. And yet backers of the top two primary, who in 2010 took a wrecking ball to the idea that spots on the November ballot should be reserved by political party, seem to envision consensus building candidates who could bridge the partisan divide. This primary would certainly cast some doubt on that idea, said Eric McGee, a researcher at the Nonpartisan Public Policy Institute of California. Detailed election results no candidate needed those moderate-minded voters more than Antonio Villaragosa. The former Los Angeles mayor labored mightily but unsuccessfully to find some sort of coalition of voters in the governor's race that would get him into a one-on-one -on -one showdown with Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom. But party label survived. And a $22.7 million boost for Villaragosa from an independent political action committee couldn't match the power of two tweets from President Trump in endorsing Republican John Cox. That may have helped even wavering GOP voters stick with the San Diego businessman rather than split their votes among other candidates, the kind of split that could have allowed Villaragosa to leapfrog into second place. This is why parties are useful, McGee said. Parties and their leaders provide information for voters, a shortcut that allows them to simplify their decision. Evidence of a party's imprint in a crowded field of candidates, in this case, its absence, also was clear in the U. S. Senate race. There, the silence of GOP leaders gave party voters no clear sign on what to do with a long list of unknown prospects. Two Democrats, Senator Dianne Feinstein and State Senator Kevin DeLeon, likely will face off against each other in November as a result. It's Newsom versus Cox in November as Villaragosa tumbles in governor's race, that may have been a casualty Republicans were willing to accept. In an election season, where their place in California's pecking order fell below that of unaffiliated voters, GOP leaders could be forgiven for celebrating their relatively strong showing on Tuesday. Not that the primary results suggest the road ahead is any easier. Cox begins the final round in the race for governor as a decided underdog, likely at the level of Neil Kashakri, the GOP challenger in 2014 to governor. Jerry Brown. Even then, Kashkari offered a pragmatic GOP stance on issues like poverty and education. He lost to Brown 60% 40%. By contrast, Cox has suggested little, if any, daylight exists between himself and Trump on hot-button issues like illegal immigration. 
If Democrats dominate in November, the 2018 primary may have done little to change the perception that California is solidly blue on the political map. Grumblings about the rules of the top two system will fade until 2020 rolls around And ultimately, the major political parties will be faced with the same dilemma that kept them from trying to scrap the rules in 2018 If they want voters to revamp the rules, what else are they willing to give them in return? After all, a recent U.S. seat Dorns of Los Angeles Times poll found a strong support for a system that allows more than just the narrow choices that were once offered by traditional primaries A ballot full of names may be confusing, but the idea of fewer choices could be seen by Californians as an onstar